Hi right, folks, back in the log cabin. I'm trying to get these uh, calipers sorted out for the Vauxhall Signum. I've just sandblasted it. Let's try and uh, get it powder coated now. Have a look at some other stuff which I've got from my lovely subscribers. See you in a minute. Well, I'm trying to get busy, but uh, first of all, I'd just like to say, if you've never been to my channel before, do consider having a subscribe there and also ring the little notification bell, and that way you'll get notified every time we upload a video. So with that said, I'd just like to thank a few of my subscribers, first of all. I've just received these from um, Ben Makepeace. Uh, keep up the good work, Martin. I've been watching since the rusty transit days. <laughs> there we go. And he's got me this kit of uh, uh, heat shrink, which is very handy for cables when you're making terminations off. So thanks very much for that. Uh, I've also got some stuff here from people I don't know who sent it. These are the JIS screw set, screwdriver set. Now you'll know what it's like if you've had a Japanese motorcycle and the crosshead screws on them, you put a normal screwdriver in there, nine times out of 10, they're all chewed up. But there is a special screwdriver for them. And those are the ones there, JIS uh, standard from the US Pro. I've got a full set there. So there's no reason why I shouldn't chop up any screw heads anymore. I've also got one of these tool zone mechanics tray. I did have one somewhere, I've lost it. Again, this comes from a subscriber. Thank you very much indeed for that, bud. We've also got um, 10 NGK spark plugs for my lawnmowers. I've run out of stock of them, so that's very handy. Thank you very much indeed for the subscriber who actually purchased them for me as well. Also, we've got here from um, Sydney, Australia, believe it or not. We've got a gift from Jace in Sydney, Australia. Love your work from the other side of the world. And those are a set of tuning uh, screwdriver special bits for different carburetors. So again, very, very handy. And I've also got some more uh, primer bulbs for Briggs and & Stratton and also the diaphragm and gasket sets as well. Again, Briggs & Stratton ones as well. Thank you very much for uh, all of my subscribers. And also this uh, ball peen hammer set. My hammers really do need work and I've I just use old hammers I've found about, and many a times I've needed a small little hammer. And again, these are absolutely ideal. So thank you very much again to our lovely subscribers. Right, with that said, let's uh, have a look at what I've done so far. I basically want to powder coat these calipers, and um, I've already done the bracket there, as you can see, on one side. Uh, that's ready to go and cleaned all the pins up. I've got the brand new seal kits and everything in this box here, and I've spent the last good hour and a half sandblasting the main body of the caliper. Let me show you. Well, as you can see now, that is totally ready for powder coating. I've cleaned it all down as well, and I've also plugged the little holes. You probably can't see them, it's a bit dark here, uh, where the threads are, so, because you don't want to get no powder coat in the thread, otherwise you've got to start tapping up the threads and stuff like that. So I'm going to powder coat that. I've also taped up where the piston goes as well. So this is only temporary at the moment. I've still got to sort out my hanging rounds from my powder coat. So let's get on, powder coat this, and then we'll uh, see where we go from there. Right, this is taking a lot longer because uh, you've got to wait for the, obviously the metal to heat up. So be aware of that. Let's put my gloves on. So if you're doing four of these, it's going to take quite a long time actually. That's probably why people take them to uh, companies that do this. They got big industrial gear, you know. So let's uh, open up. There we go. Let's go and hang it up and I'll show you it. Okay, I can't touch it at the moment, obviously it's red hot, but there we go. That's the uh, caliper now powder coated. 
I will do the other front one. I'm not going to mess about with the back ones. It's only because I've got to take the front one off again to put the new discs on anyway. So while I've got it stripped down, I might as well do this as well. So there you go. It looks all right, doesn't it? I'm pleased with that. Right, so Gary found this lawnmower. It's a Honda lawnmower on the side of the road, Gary. Yeah, it had a message on it, free scrap. So he took it home anyway. So it's the first time he's really looked at it. So uh, what have we found with it so far? All he done to it was put some petrol in it. And it fired up, it was revving re really, really high. So um, we had a quick look at it. We had the, we've had the carb just loosely off just to see if the uh, the throttle mechanism was working correctly. But we found that the, um, hold on, let me show you. We found that this, the governor arm there was solid. So I'll just put a looser one on there for the moment. And it, the opposite effect now, as you can see, I had to stretch it because I didn't have the right spring. So now it's ticking over too low now. So it is a problem with that. I've already set the governor arm up there. And the way you do that, you undo that nut on the back there. You've got a little half moon shaft coming through the, from the engine. You get a pair of pliers and you turn that clockwise and you have the arm in the back position while you're turning that clockwise and then you nip that screw up and that should be the governor arm in the set position. But as you say, we haven't got enough tension on that spring now. So we was going to start it up again for you, but uh, being an old lawnmower, the cable snapped. So we've tried to source another cable for it. We haven't got one for a Honda, so we're gonna to have to uh, decide how far he's gonna go with this one. What was that, the throttle cable, that was it? Yeah, this one I just got off another mower. I don't know if I'm gonna to have to make something up with it or not. Right, well, well, he's gonna tinker about with that anyway, as I say, but it looks like, by the looks of it, it needs new belts as well. If you're gonna spend any money on this, yeah. it would obviously have to be worth him to do that, you know? So you're looking at a, a cable there, for example, maybe a new belt, because the belt's all cracked down there, but, if it doesn't work with this time invested in it, bearing in mind he got it for scrap anyway, it may just be worth putting it on Facebook, uh, advertising it for 35 pounds or something like that, and uh, just getting someone to come along and take it and they can spend the money on it. So, you know, you don't always have to repair them when you get them. And things like cables can take a, a, a restoration job out of a financial profit sort of thing. So that's why it's always wise. If you do get an old lawnmower and you see one for 10 pounds, you might as well take it because you can strip it down and keep things like cables if the cables are all right. So just something to keep an eye out for if you're looking for an old lawnmower with a totally rotten deck, it might be worth having it anyway because these cables are quite dear. <sighs> right, that other spring was a bit too weak. So I've put this other one back on again, this original one, and just stretched it a little bit. And let's see what happens now. We've made a new cable. Oh, and we got a new, well, not a new cable. We found an old cable and we've cut one down and made an end on it. So that's what we've done there. See, that's on fast speed at the moment, but uh, obviously it's not fast. You can see someone's put some cable ties on here for this belt mechanism. I do believe the tension on that spring is not correct. I don't think that's the right spring on there. Because it's just ticking over too low. And it's hunting. So I try to drive. The drive works as well, how about that? So yeah, it might be okay to work on. So all we'll do for it, we'll get a new spring for that governor arm mechanism, just the right tension on it. I think that matters a lot. And as you can probably see, let's show you. Someone's obviously just sort of kept it going, as you can see here, look. Things like these cable ties here. There's old tape around here, like where he's probably gone through the cable. And as you know, the cables for this, I would imagine, are quite expensive. So uh, we just had an old cable. We've uh, not hashed it up, but we've made a new connection in there. We cut the outer sheath off of an old cable, which was way too long. And that's what we've done there, basically. So uh, I think realistically, the carb's got to come off. That can be ultrasonic cleaned and stripped down. There's not much wrong with the deck. It's an alley deck on this, so everything looks all right there. The belt, as you can probably see there, has perished. For the sake of putting a new belt on it, you might as well just do that. This, what's this here? Look, they've, they've pulled this jockey wheel in, haven't they, with this? Is there something that should have gone on there? Like a yeah, it's a cable. Oh, it's another broken cable. Oh, sure so that does that, whatever that is, that probably takes the drive in, doesn't it? The, the, the front wheel, the, the wheel drive. There's a cable 
clamp there where obviously the cable terminates there and then hangs onto this lever there. So that's missing as well. And an, oh look, he's just found another cable broke. So obviously it's a Honda mower, but it's been totally neglected by the looks of it. And the owner's just thought, I'm not going to throw hundred pound at it or whatever. And uh, quite rightly so. And he's just give up on it and put it out for scrap. We found it. And uh, as I say, we've got to decide now how far to go over it. We might just clean the car and get it running correctly. And then maybe just out it, not unless we can find some other cables for it. And uh, a little basic clean up and this could be a good runner and a good earner as well, being a Honda. Good. Yeah, as Gary said, the bags alone, you know, if you strip this down or take the, the motor off, the, uh, the parts alone, which you can get off of this, is going to be considerably more than what he paid for it. Bearing in mind, he got it for nothing. So definitely worth doing a little bit of time on it. Worth stripping the carb down, worth getting it absolutely running absolutely perfectly. And then, as I say, we can either advertise it that it needs new cables and let someone else do it. Because again, there's probably someone out there in the local area who has a job lot of spares of these. They probably buy Honda mowers and they would just have the cables to put on it. No good for a consumer, people like you and me, well, not you and me, we're different, we repair these. But the average person, the average person wouldn't spend the money to spend 30, 40 pounds on cables. But Someone who works on lawnmowers might have them as spares, in which case they can turn a profit. It's all about passing it on if you can't repair or it's uneconomical for you to repair and someone else might repair it. So that's what we'll probably do. So, But no reason why we can't get the engine running for the sake of taking the carb off, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and get that done. Anyway, I'm starting to waffle. I'm going back inside. Right, is that still hot? Oh, look at that, that's still red. It's been half an hour so far. So I think what it is, it's four o'clock now. I'll probably just go inside now. Let's get over here. And uh, yeah, so I'll leave it here for now. I know it's not much to show you really. I wanted to show you me rebuilding this caliper, but we can do that tomorrow. It's not a problem. And uh, don't forget, as I said before, if you like our channel, do hit the subscribe button. Also hit the little notification bell. And as I said before, I noticed a couple of these have gone now on eBay. I think three t-shirts have gone and uh, one hoodie. If you are interested in the merchandise, just type in Retro Restore on uh, eBay and you'll find the merchandise there. There's a whole selection of sizes, what the diesel guy's doing for me. So um, yeah, hope you enjoy this video and don't forget, it's just a tinkering one. As I'm not doing much at the moment, I'm waiting for stuff to come up. Those of you who did see my little uh, pink black and decker drill, which I restored yesterday, hope you enjoyed that one. Sharon did, not. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you again in the next video and until then, bye for now. <laughs>